Today, I am going to give an update on my Spanish learning. Now, 66 days ago today, I uh, set out the challenging task to use my social isolation time to learn a new language, something I wasn't particularly good at at school. Um, and I, I set myself three months to become fluent in Spanish. If you want to watch the video on how I lay out what fluent means and how I started my journey, please do check out that video above. Um, so I've still got a bit more time. I've got roughly three more weeks or just over until I have my allotted time finished. But what I did want to do is give a bit of an update on one particular technique that I found really, really useful, which fits into another video I did on the R system, or which again is above here. And this is something that I've wanted to talk about for a while because I think it's a massively beneficial system um, and something that isn't taught in schools uh, and something that I think I think maybe should be uh, because it really has helped me get a practical, uh, functional use of Spanish really, really quickly uh, to the extent that loads of people I'm talking, talking to online, I'm talking to people all over the world, in Mexico, Argentina, Berlin even, England, um, on a regular basis, lots of them are commenting on how quickly I've progressed and become functional in having a conversation and I think a massive part of that is this system here which is as it says in the title of this video learning the a thousand most commonly used words of Spanish and this system can be used in any language that you're learning whether you're doing German or French or whatever um, so I hope it's useful for you I hope it gives you something new to think about uh, it really has been a lifesaver um, so here we go Hi there, if you're already subscribed to this channel, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. Uh, I'm Ran and I do daily, I do weekly videos on GCSE and A-level advice. So if that sounds useful, hit that subscribe button. All right, so firstly, just to give an overview of why I started this system. Um, so what I started with uh, Spanish was essentially looking up random words, looking up the GCSE syllabus, um, and what I was finding, or, or looking on apps for instance, and just finding long lists of categorised words. So for instance, uh, if you wanted to go through all the food, you learned tomato, chicken, avocado, uh, any other kind of food that you're going to buy in the supermarket and then you go on to and then you go on to countries so you list the different uh, countries and you keep going down these lists and I, I did that for for a couple of weeks and then I realized I wasn't using any of the words that I'm learning in actual conversations that I'm having on a day-to-day -day basis I'm not using words like tomato I'm not using the animals, I'm not using horse, for instance, or cow in general language. I'm not using these different countries unless I've actually been to them very often. So I thought I wanted to get a more strategic way of getting the right vocab as quickly as I possibly could. So what I did, I did a quick Google search and found a website called A Thousand Most Common Words. And this is a really simple website and whoever made it is a genius, I think. But uh, for every single language that you can think of, they've listed the, the top most 1,000 commonly used words. Now, it's not an exact science, but it has been incredibly useful in getting me to a conversational level much quicker because the words that I'm covering are used in everyday language. So that's the reason why I went for the commonly used words rather than random lists that quite often at school you're asked to learn. Now why is a thousand words uh, significant? And it's actually, and when I did some more research into it, it's not necessarily that surprising that it's helped me uh, talk very quickly in a different language knowing these a thousand words. Because it turns out if you're a native speaker in any language, um, you use on a daily basis between 1,000 and 3,000 words anyway. So even you in English, even me talking to you right now and going about my daily business, I'm unlikely to use more than 3,000 words and it's gonna be somewhere probably in the middle. So 
any time that you're learning a new language, getting the thousand most commonly, commonly used words down is a massive advantage and just gives you a big head start because aside from the grammar, aside from all the other things and the accent, you've got that kind of background vault of knowledge, of vocabulary in your head that you can draw on when you need it. So this system is aimed at firstly, uh, anyone doing uh, GCSE or A-level in any language because I'm going to tell you how to adapt it to your language. I've been learning Spanish but you can do it for any of them. But also as I said in the intro I'm going to be running through how I've been using the R or the 6R system that I've gone through in a previous video. Um, how I'm making sure that that information is going into my head and in that way you can do this system with pretty much any subject. Um, that involves a list of some kind. You could do it with science definitions that you can't remember, like mitosis or flame test. You could do it with historical dates. You could do it with geographical formations because what this system does is allows you to efficiently and effectively review it in an easy to view way, but also recap it and make sure that it's actually going in your head. So without further ado, here's the system. All right, first step is routine. And I'm essentially by routine mean I'm going to plan it out and make sure that I'm doing it the most effectively over a period of time. So as it said in the title of this video, I set myself three weeks to do this and I essentially got to this number by breaking those a thousand words into 50 words a day. I'm gonna be reviewing 50 words a day. I thought that was doable. And then I'm gonna schedule that in my diary. So I use Google calendars, but you can use whatever you're doing to schedule your time at the moment. At your guys level, I'd start using an app called Adapt, which I keep banging on about on this channel because it's great but put it in to your calendar over the next three weeks when you're gonna do it. I'm scheduling when I'm going to be doing the things that I'm saying that I'm gonna do. Because if you don't do that, it's way too easy for, to let other things get in the way and get sidetracked and get demotivated. If you were gonna use Adapt, that will also give you a push notification at those times in order to remind you that you need to do it to give you a little bit more motivation. Also to help me with my routine, I set up a Google spreadsheet and I took the words from that 1000 most commonly used words website, put it into the spreadsheet and then that means I'm able to clearly track what words I'm going over and when I'm going over them. In the link I've included my Spanish version that I've been using but you can uh, click on that and change it to any language that you're doing, just literally uh, delete all of the words in there and change it to German or French or whatever it is that you want to use system's exactly the same. All right, next step is review. So I've set myself up with the routine. I can see all the words that I need to go over, just going down on a big spreadsheet. How do I actually go over them? How do I make sure that it's going in my head? It's not gonna be enough to just look at the list, uh, however long that I'm looking at it. Um, so what did I do for this? Well, I got an amazing app. I love this app so much called Spanish Dict, Spanish Dict. So get that from the app store. And essentially with Spanish Dicts, which should be appearing on the screen now, you can input any word that you want, whether it's English or Spanish, and then create your own cue card from it. Because they have a pre-made bank of cue cards already, so you just find it from there and put it into a list for that particular day. So as you can see, I had a list for each day that I was reviewing words so I could keep track of when I was recapping them. That'll become important later on. And by the way, I didn't necessarily put all 50 words in. I just put in the words that I thought I would struggle to, to remember. So in that way, I'm only reviewing the words that I really need to go over. Now, once I had my list created for that day of the words that I was gonna review, I then normally went over it twice. I went through those words twice throughout the day in two different ways. And this is another great thing about the app. You can set it firstly to be multiple choice. And this is normally what I did for the first round of going over because I didn't know the words that well and it helped having a, a multiple choice. The next step is regurgitate. Now regurgitate, is uh, the second way that I would re review those words. And in this case, it means I'm swapping from multiple choice, which is obviously a lot easier to get, and I'm not necessarily getting it in my head, to either vocalizing the word, and this is a new feature the app has, you can literally say the word, um, so you're regurgitating that information, 
or you write the word into the app and it tests whether you get it right. And this is gonna make sure that I'm not just passively looking at the content or taking it in, which I might be doing with multiple choice, but I am making sure that I am actively doing something to ensure that I'm making that brain pathway in my head and therefore remembering the words. All right, next part is respond. Now respond in this context is going back to that spreadsheet I originally did and then I'm essentially testing myself on those 50 words. So all I have to, all I do is cover up those Spanish words in black and then I just go through and see which ones I remember and which I don't. Now I don't always remember all of them. I, I sometimes get, you know, 60% right, sometimes I get 80% right. Um, but there's always words that I haven't remembered even after going over it twice. So this leads us nicely onto our next step, which is record. I record the result that I got. And in this situation, all I do is rate against each word whether I found it easy, hard, or completely failed it. And by doing this, I've now recorded which words that I likely know much better and which words that I'm gonna to have to do some extra work on. I'm essentially pinpointing the words that I need to work on more so I'm not wasting time on things that I already know. And this is gonna be important for the next and final step and the very important step that is often missed out. And the recap step, as I said, is just making sure that I'm going over the words that I rated previously as either failures or hard. And I make recapping a part of my daily process. So we went through before the review process, which is going over 50 new words. I'm also gonna put in some recap words in there as well. And my system that I chose to do is not only go over 50 new words a day, but recap from the day before the words that I got wrong and the words three days before that I got wrong. So in that way, with the harder words, I'm potentially going over them three times, whereas the easier words, I might only need to go over once. Okay, so it was a slightly more complicated video this time. I appreciate I was getting a bit more detail. What I am gonna do is put some instructions on the spreadsheet in the link below uh, to, help you, to help you understand um, so you can have a read of that. If you have any questions or clarifications on what I've just talked about, please do let me know in the comments below. And if you have any ideas for future videos as ever, please do let me know as well. Until next time, see you later.